Hi everyone and welcome back to the Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and we are going to unbox the March Scrawler box today. Um, just before we do that I want to give you a little bit of a Julia K update. Um, I know I said I would do an update video and that is still coming. I'm just kind of struggling for time right now. It's calving season and we have got babies popping out everywhere. But in the interim period, in the shop today, the link is down in the description, we have three new colours for April from Julia K. And that is Ingrid, Agnes and Findus. And here you can see I've got a couple of wee swatches just to show you what they look like. So Ingrid is a flat colour um, or a base colour, whichever you want to call it. And it's this lovely rich sort of yellow ochre colour. We've also got Agnes, which is a granulating colour. And you can see it's got this nice earthy sort of brown tone to it. But um, it does actually have a tiny bit of gold sparkle in it. Um, it is very, very subtle. I think you can just see it here. So that gives you a really nice sort of surprise element to it. And I thought that Findus was a fitting colour uh, just for the springtime. Things are starting to green up here in Scotland. This is a lovely spring green colour to add to your collection. So those are available in the stash shop. I have also restocked some of the colours that were out of stock. So if you're looking for the likes of Nat or Rosa, they are back in stock too. I also have a few of Julia's washi tapes that she sent me. Um, her Etsy store is closed for the time being, so she sent me a few bits and bobs over to sell in the stash shop. Um, the washi tape is very limited quantities though, so if you want to check those out, I would be quick. So we've got this lovely uh, traditional Swedish pattern here on a blue background and um, this is just lovely as you can see it's very very delicate again I'll zoom back in a little bit so that you can see it and uh, Julia drew this pattern by hand originally and um, so she did a great job and we've also got our little houses from the Almoga set and um, there is that lovely one there in addition to that I have a couple of rows of the pretty potions tape now this is my the absolute favourite like this is my favourite Julia washi tape because it's got all the colours and they're in a very satisfying spectrum and we've also got the piggy roll as well I've got a couple of those in stock as well so if you fancy any of these items you can head over to the stash shop and grab yourself some goodies Okay, so March Scrawler box here. This is the UK monthly art subscription box. So we have a selection of surprise supplies that are supposed to work together and we can use inspiration from the magazine that comes in the box to create something to the prompt, which also comes in the box. These boxes are great if you're just starting out with art and want to build up a, a selection of supplies or try a range of supplies without risking too much money-wise. If, like me, you're a bit more experienced, I tend to find the value in the box comes for me in the form of the stuff in the magazine, the featured artist for inspiration, and also the prompt, because sometimes it's good to get you your creative engine revving up again if you're getting a wee bit stale. So let's see what we've got in store. Ooh, everything's nice and tidy. Love it when that happens. Here is our featured artist's artwork. And as we can see, it's a pattern. Um, it's kind of hard to tell what medium we're in. Uh, there's definitely a marker of some description here because there's lots of little dots. So that might be a white paint pen or something. But these colours are quite vibrant. Okay, uh, this person is Swedish. I know this because of the little circle above the first name. I'm not even going to try and pronounce this because Julia is going to shout at me. Um, but the featured artist um, enjoys working in watercolours, markers, coloured pencils and acrylics. So I suppose you could say a mixed media artist. Um, they do have an Instagram as well. Very pretty. This kind of reminds me of chocolate, weirdly. Ah, that's super nice, I like it. Okay, and here is our surface and uh, it's a little Sea White of Brighton recycled sketchbook and this is made using rescued coffee cups. I'm very familiar obviously with the Sea White supplies um, because I stock them in the stash shop. I don't stock this particular sketchbook but all of the Sea White sketchbooks are really good value for money so you're not going to go wrong with this. 
140 GSM paper and 40 pages, so plenty to keep you occupied. Uh, these wee stapled books are great. I love them for like project books or study books, you know, if you're wanting to look at something in particular, or maybe you do something like Inktober or, you know, like month a month of prompt type projects. These books are great for that. Uh, I say the paper is, uh, is very reliable as well. This recycled paper will obviously have a fleck in it. There's a wee bit of coffee cup fleck in there, but 140 GSM, so it'll take a wee bit of water, I would imagine, and and uh, we, sh we should do quite well with that. So that's a good start. Frawler zine, we will look at this in just a minute. Um, don't want to spoil the fun. I can't believe we're in our 103rd scroller box already. That's crazy. Right, let's see what we've got in here. <laughs> oh no! Right, here we go. Uh, we always get a sweet uh, from scroller box as well. And this is a milk chocolate eclair. These are terrible for your teeth, but they're really tasty. <laughs> Here, so we've got a frisk white gel pen, so that's where the white dots on the featured artwork have come from. Good to know, never tried a frisk one. Generally, I don't get on very well with gel pens, so this will be interesting and you all can have a good laugh at me. And we've also got a Unipin fine liner in sepia. I also sell these in the stash shop, um, so if it's something you're looking for, uh, if you decide you like it, you can head over. I can only get the sepia one in the 0 0.5. That's the only nib size it seems to come in or that's, that we can get here in the UK. Um, but it's a really nice middle ground. These pens are so reliable. A lot of people favour these in the Pigma Microns and uh, I, I would wholeheartedly agree. I use both interchangeably and um, obviously I've got an unlimited supply of them so you know it's really nice that we've got sepia instead of black for a change as well so I like that too. Here's our little scroller box sticker which is the pattern from the featured artwork. That's really cute. I like that. I really like that and I like the colours together. Pentel Arts Brush Sign Pen Twin Tip. A broad brush tip, one end, fine brush tip, the other also double brushes. Oh, vivid colours, acid free. I have quite an interesting colour selection there. These look really muted. The first thing that I noticed straight away is these pens are quite small, they're quite short. Um, which, you see the size of the barrel there, that means they're not not going to hold a huge amount of ink so if you get all fanatical about these they might not last very long we we will find out in due course though the other thing i notice as well that just going by these barrel colors not the ink color we've got very similar colors here um i'm hoping that they don't uh i'm hoping that they don't flow out as similarly as that uh, but we'll find out when we swatch them out so we've got 10 here and let's take a look at these brush tips oh that is quite nice that is, that's quite nice. Okay, and the other end is a weeny weeny wee dinky tip. Oh, it's so cute. Um, it'll be interesting to find out how brushy this end actually is, but again, we will find out when we test these supplies out. So let's have a look at the barrels. Um, they do have colour names on them, which is nice. Um, on this silver label here, that's kind of hard to, to show you in the with the reflection. The sun's in and out from behind the clouds today, which is a veritable filming nightmare, but that's okay. Uh, heliotrope, silver grey, dark brown, light grey. Okay. Yeah, though those are significantly different, these two here. Okay, nice. What else have we got here? Beige, dark red and magenta, and a raw umber colour as well. Okay. Interesting, very interesting. So I say we'll test those out just shortly. Let's take a look at what our scroller zine has to say. So the front page is always the the sort of overview of the supplies and as you can see everything's beautifully laid out here. And we've got our teeny tiny QR code and this is going to take us to the supply list. We will have a look at that and see if we can learn anything else about these supplies. I'm quite interested to find out about the a bit more about pens. Scroller box 103. What's in the box? These dual tip markers are super versatile, high quality and offer precise control. Yeah, I would think so with the, the little tip. Ideal for hand lettering, sketching or even journaling, the brush tip offers smooth, flexible lines with a consistent flow. They feature a water-based ink, so that means they are soluble in water as well if you wanted to thin them out for any reason. Flexible lines, consistent flow, quick drying, resistant ink to fading, and the pens are designed with a comfortable grip, allowing you to work for extended periods without discomfort. I would say that's probably more prevalent for maybe people that are lettering. You know, because once you start the, the stroke of a letter, you kind of can't stop until you're finished. These markers give you the freedom, freedom to create various strokes and effects to enhance your creativity and achieve stunning results. The recommended retail price for these is 24 
that seems a bit steep. For, now again, for for a larger marker, I wouldn't be quite so um you know quite so concerned about that. Obviously, the the RRP normally you can get things a lot cheaper than that if you shop about, uh, but that does seem pretty steep. The Frisk white gel pen, Frisk button pen form, smooth flowing hard wearing ballpoint nib pen glides across the page with ease, allowing for a consistent line of opaque white ink. It's not that opaque and we can see that from, from the featured artist uh, and this is always the sort of acid test with these white pens. It's how opaque are they really? I personally don't mind if they have a little bit of transparency to them as long as I can layer it up so that I can get a really good opacity and um, because that gives the actual item itself flexibility. So we'll test that out too. Can, can be blended and layered for ultimate opacity. The ink is odourless and non-toxic. Okay, cool. The CPF Fine Liner. Rich, earthy sepia tone, just like its black counterpart, this pen contains a solid pigment ink, fade proof and produces a line and precise, a line and precise, it's fade proof and produces a line and precise consistent line, okay, good typo there, excellent for drawing, writing and design work, permanent once dry, you can blend this out with water while still wet, recommended retail price is £1.95. And you can pick these up in the stash shop for £1.50. The recycled sketchbook protecting the environment has always been a focus at Sea White and as a sentiment we echo here at Scrawlerbox. Uh, this sketchbook is from their cup cycling range. Uh, yeah, they do, they do do like a large range of recycled sketchbooks. They're pretty good for that. Single use coffee cups that are made from a 140 GSM white. It says in brackets, kind of white. It has those lovely recycled speckles of imperfection in there. Acid free chlorine paper, perfect for kinds of mixed, all kinds of mixed media projects. You can also recycle after use. Nice. I wish someone would check for typos in this. I'm I'm really sick of this. Like that's that's riddled with errors. Anyway, so that is the state of our supplies. So kind of stuff we already knew, but again, if you're new here, that would be helpful. Okay, so on to the good bit now. Here is a chat with the featured artist and also some of our other artwork. This is stunning, absolutely stunning. And we've got the scroller tips. This for me is probably the most interesting and also the most important part, especially if you've never used the supplies before. So always want to swatch out and um, they're talking about layering up the colours here to create different things and mark making tips as well. So using your the each nib of the pen in a different way to create different strokes. This helps to add interest. It gives texture and depth to your pictures as well when you're actually drawing. Here is the Frisk pen. So not completely opaque, kind of standard for these gel pens, but we'll see what it's like for drying time and layering up as well. It's talking about experimenting with dot work here as well. You've got to be very, very patient for that. I don't know if I've got the patience for that. And they're also adding water here as well. So this has created quite a nice effect here. So uh, a moment of zen warm up for hand drawing. Um, that's something I do all the time because I've got a dodgy hand. And they're talking about zen tangles here. So basically you can create a scribble and then make it into some sort of pattern and they're actually giving you step by step here to create something like this which is lovely really like that i like when they put this level of detail in because even though you might be well versed in something like you can there's nothing you can possibly tell me about graphite like i know everything there is to know about graphite and all the techniques and what to do but with stuff like this i don't do zentangles so that's really helpful and um, so there's i always find that the information is relevant and useful but it's also quite concise in these magazines as well and i absolutely love that we've got advice from the artist as well and um, so she's talking about pressure patience and uh, the, the actual chat about the artwork that's come in the box which i i really like and i'm not really into patterns so that says a lot oh here we have the scholar box 101 gallery this is everything flows now this was the the um boya crayons which they were good fun to play with and there's some really good artworks here like there's, there's people have done a really really good job uh, it just wasn't for me at all um, but it's nice to see such a variety in what they've produced as well. Loving this little fish here at Jen Lewis Art. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, well, let's flick over the page. So this was the top three. Uh, Sue Lockwood, Gemma Walton and Esther Katona. And these are all nice as well. Oh, we've got a scroller discord as well. Okay, what inspires you? The 101 scroller box feature supply you might normally think to use. So this is actually an interview with her own reality um, about what they created for the box or using the supplies in the box. So that's pretty cool as well. 
hide and seek. So this is about secret messages and artworks. I love that as well. And there's theories about hidden messages. Now again, a lot of that's down to interpretation, but that's one of the things I love about art. So down the side here, they have their live stream for this box, which is the 25th of April. I keep trying to remember about this. 6pm UK time, that's kind of an odd time for me as well. And especially, well, no time's a good time for me just now. Calves popping out everywhere. But um, I need to try and remember. And I actually put it in my Google Calendar this time so I don't forget. It's not to say I'm actually going to be able to make it, but still. And finally, we have our prompt, which is Hidden Gems. Hidden in plain sight. For this month's challenge, take inspiration from our featured artists and use these supplies to form shapes within shapes and patterns inside patterns. Try building up a series of small shapes that fit together to form something magical. Experiment using simple lines and dots to build the bigger picture. Or we could draw something with a hidden message, as is suggested here. Okay, that's quite a nice prompt. I like that. I like it a lot. Okay, I think we should test out these supplies. So I'm going to use the back page of this. I have sketchbooks coming out my ears. I do not need any more sketchbooks. I will pop this on as like a little bargain extra on the shop after I'm finished with it. Um, but obviously there will be a test page, which is the back page. Um, but that's not intrus too intrusive if you want to use it for other things. So let's just call it what it is. So first things first, we want to swatch out our colours of our Pentel markers here. Oh, that's pretty. Honestly, not thrilled about the, the colour choices. Uh, this is a really pretty purple colour. Um, this was one uh, heliotrope. And having this beige colour is quite nice as well. It's not a palette that instantly screams I want to draw a something. Um, that's not happening for me. Uh, however, this will probably suit some people. I'm actually really tempted to pick out the, the sort of monochromatic elements of it and maybe stick in like a pop of this magenta colour or the one that was dark red, wasn't it? No, magenta. Yeah, this magenta colour. Um, I, I don't know. Okay. Um, so I want to talk a bit more about the brush tip now. Honestly, uh, it feels really stiff. It feels really rigid. Um, if I've got a brush tip like that, I would expect the whole tip to bend. And it's not. It's just like the very tip of it that's bending. So that's a little bit disappointing for me. Sometimes these brushes do loosen off over time. You know, the, as you keep using them, the bristles kind of loosen a little bit. Um, but you can see, I mean, I'm pressing quite hard there and it's only the very tip that's moving. But you can see all the different and lovely little marks I can make with it. So it is pretty versatile. I would have hoped for a little bit more movement in that large brush. The small brush tip, uh, it, it's flexible. I can feel it bending and I love this end. Again, I like teeny weeny 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 nibs. So this is kind of more my thing. Um, I would be much happier using this end uh, than the other end, honestly. Obviously having the, the, the larger brush is great because you can cover large areas, you can block in colour and you're going to get more interesting effects when it comes to mixing it with water, that kind of thing. But I love this. So I'm actually more of a fan of the tiny end than the, the brush end. And I do appreciate a good brush tip. So yeah, okay. I've kind of got mixed feelings about, about these pens. Um, on this paper as well, I'm not sure how well we're going to fare with the whole adding of the water. So let's try that out. Here is the, uh, the brown. This is the raw umber. So this is this colour here. So let's whack out a huge... Look how quickly I can cover that though. It's quite an interesting texture with the recycled paper as well. So I'm just going to use my water brush here, which is quite a nice idea, and see what I can do. The answer is I can do a little bit. Um, I can, uh, ugh, it's taking some of the colour and pushing it out again because we're on recycled paper. It's kind of taking the paper with it too. Oh, yeah. So we're back to this old trope of, oh, you can put it in a palette and water it down. If I was going to do that, I would use paint. I do not need to be doing that with markers. Um, so limited uses, obviously, it does have versatility, but in terms of it actually being a pen, um, you, you're going to have to be very careful. I imagine you would get on better with this sort of idea on slightly less absorbent paper, maybe more, more of a marker paper or a Bristol paper. 
uh, just a thought, just a suggestion. If anybody wants to try that out and tell me how it goes, please feel free to let me know in the comments. In fact, this video is so late from the box being released, I'm pretty sure some of you have tried that already. So y'all can just get down into the comments and tell me. <laughs> Okay, so hard to manipulate, because I went straight in there. Hard to manipulate when it's on the paper, but that could be a lot to do with the fact that we are working on recycled paper. So there might be another little experiment there in terms of our um, versatility in the water-soluble sense. Here is our little sepia fine liner, and as I say, these super reliable, just exactly what you need. Uh, the 0 0.5, it seems to flow quite well. The nib is big enough to give you, you know, enough ink let down to kind of get on with things without being all scratchy. But it's also small enough that you can really get some delicate little lines in there again. If you wanted to do a wee bit of hatching or even from the dot work perspective as well, this darker pen... It's good without being too dark um, because obviously sometimes if you're using black, especially with more delicate colours, it can be quite overpowering. Um, and the CP is pretty good for that. For um, If you wanted to do some dot work, you know, for some shading, pretty good for that too. Okay, I feel like we're good here. So let's, uh, let's see how this goes. I am not confident about this at all. This feels like a really cheap gel pen, I'm not going to lie. Uh, right, okay. So let's try. Oh. Now we are on a dark colour here. Um, so there is every chance that the pigment is going to soak through into the gel but that's okay because if we've got the option to go back over it then everything should be fine the 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 ink flow seems to be not too bad and that's the thing that I always seem to struggle with we're okay in both directions it is a bit scratchy but these pens usually are uh, but I'm not I'm not mad about this guys let's try some little Dotty dots. Okay, I'm going to give that a couple of minutes dry. That's looking fairly good. Um, sometimes the white balance on this camera, which I've fiddled about nine, with nine million times, by the way, it seems to exaggerate lighter areas and make them lighter than they actually are. But that is actually accurate to what I can see with my naked eyeballs. So that's good. So I'm going to leave that to dry. While that is drying, I am going to switch to my own sketchbook. This big yellow bad boy here. And uh, I really want to try out... I've kind of got an idea in my head for the challenge. Uh, let's uh, get that for a riot of a test page. This is my, my niece as well. <laughs> Very artistic. Uh, right, okay, yep. Yeah. So let's try these pens with water solubility. This paper is much smoother. And... Um, I'm just really interested to see what happens here, to see if it actually is any different or whether it's more the pens that's causing, not the, not causing the problem, that makes it sound, no, that, is not, that was not diplomatic at all. Um, you know what I mean, whether it's the paper that's affecting the solubility aspect of it or whether it's the actual ink and that's just the way it is. So let's try again, I want to go fairly quickly here and I can see that soaking into the paper. Uh, well, you can see that there's weird texture there too, so that's no different from the recycled paper. Again, maybe if I zoom in a little bit, you can see that texture coming through. So, um, okay, I've got a palette. I'm loath to do this because uh, it kind of goes against the point as far as I'm concerned of having a pen. But for the purposes of demonstration and seeing what we can and can't do. So I'm going to pick this up with my water brush. This is the beige. Ooh, that is delicate. Would you look at that? Now, what I'm interested in seeing is, can I now work these edges out? And the answer is no. I just wondered with it being a little bit more dilute whether I would be able to... Oh, I can. It's taken a bit of work. Ah, okay. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really impressed with the solubility aspect. And I would say that these pens aren't really designed for that, although it can be done. Just because you can do something doesn't necessarily mean that you should do it. Uh, so that, that's my verdict on that. However, it is possible, as you can see from here. Okay, let's jump back in here. And uh, this is this has dried fairly well. I can touch this. Uh, we're not we're not smudging or anything like that. So let's see what happens when we try and go back over it. In my experience, a lot of time the second layer actually lifts the first layer. Um, so we're going to go gently. Oh. A little bit. Not bad though. Okay, okay. Yeah, no quick movements. Uh, this sort of 
very tight scumbling motion seems to be the way forward if you want to layer it up. But honestly, see if you're just adding little highlights or dots like this, there's no need for a second layer. So I am, I'm actually suitably impressed with this. You know, I'm thinking if I wanted a highlight on a round object, um, I think I would just go with one pass and that's working on, on fairly, well, I would say mid to dark tone ink. So that's not bad at all. Let's just go across this test page and do one pass and see what happens on every colour. I want to see how much the pigment soaks in. Again, if they're both water-based, that's, you know, they're, they're, they're going to mix together. I had to go over that and didn't do a very good job. But yeah, look, that's, that's very visible. Even on this pale grey, you can see that there. I like that. Okay. So all in all, I think we can safely say that these supplies work well together. I'm assuming that this gel pen will go over the top of the over the top of the sepia fine liner as well yeah we've got no problems there okay so this could be quite a good tool in the arsenal i'm fairly fairly impressed with that especially on account of the fact that uh, gem gem and gel pens generally don't mix really always happy to have a uni pen fine liner even though i've got a million of them <laughs> i'm not mad about that either uh, there are far inferior objects that we could have given in place of that uh, the only thing that's kind of uh, kind of holding me back a little bit here with my thoughts is the the colour selection wouldn't have been my first choice, but I think we can work with it. And I was expecting a bit more flexibility in the brush tip of the uh, of these pens, but uh, definitely not terrible products. They all work well together, which is something that sometimes these subscription boxes drop the ball with. So overall, fairly impressed, quite happy with the box. I'm going to go and have a ruminate and a cup of tea for an hour because I think I actually might do something with this prompt. I'm uh, just going to stick it in as a, a sort of time lapse near the end here and we can have a bit of a chat at the end. But overall, uh, good job scroller box. Please just check your typos and your descriptions. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> Love to hear your thoughts on this. The, br the brush pens are, I don't know. I imagine that people that hand letter will be really excited to have these if they don't have them already. Um, I think they would be great for hand lettering just for having that slightly firmer brush tip. Uh, again, if you do lettering or calligraphy, I would love to hear what you think about these pens and whether it's something you would use for that purpose. So that's me all finished up. I have been sitting here for hours just dotting things. Um, I don't know if uh, my my hidden gems actually turned out quite the way I wanted them to. I think a finer, fine liner uh, would have done a better job, particularly this one and this one. Uh, but still, I, I've had really good fun with this and even, even that aside, I'm quite happy with my big gem. So overall, yep, I've had great fun with this box. I like the contents of the box and as is usual for me, uh, these twin tip markers, not really something that I would use long term, not really a marker person. Uh, so I'll pop these in the stash shop if anybody wants to have a go. I was really surprised at the combination of 
uh, this purple colour with the beige mixed together. That's worked out really well and it's given a nice warm hue there. So overall pretty satisfied. I would love to know your thoughts on this box. I'd also love to know what you did for your scroller challenge because this video is pretty late. So please feel free to enter some dialogue down under the video in the comments section. You know I always enjoy reading through your comments and I love to hear your opinions as well. So that is it for today guys thank you very much for watching thanks for coming and hanging out you know i always appreciate it and uh, i will see you really soon for an update video where i've got some exciting news for you so keep your eyes peeled and have a great day everyone bye bye for now